what's up guys, hope you've been well. Today we're taking a look at GoldenEye's top 10 hardest target times, and therefore the top 10 hardest cheats to unlock. For those that have made it through the entire game on Double O Agent, well you're in luck because there are still more challenges ahead, and I think it's fair to say that at least a handful of them are going to keep you busy for quite a while. Before we get started, this list is based on the amount of time and effort it just took me to get through all of these as I played through all 20 just for this video. I'd love to know which ones you thought were the toughest or most memorable. As a bonus, just before number 1, we'll quickly touch on each of the other 10 that did not make the list. Without further delay, here are the top 10 hardest target times in GoldenEye. Number 10, Frigate. On Secret Agent, in 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Frigate's the 7th mission in the game, and basically it's pretty tricky just because of all of its dang hostages. Things can get messy in those rooms, and if you're too late, you'll hear it as they bust the cap right into these unlucky passengers. Being on Secret Agent at least gives you a bit more cushion in terms of your enemy's accuracy and their damage done to you. Plus, you often kill them in a couple less shots too. But since you're kind of in a rush, and there's a good amount of soldiers here and there, having your life drained is a legitimate threat. You have to make your way through the boat, releasing its various hostages from capture, and also disarm two bombs basically on opposite ends of the ship. One is down in the engine room, with more guards, a hostage to snag, it's actually not super unlikely that the terminal or bomb gets shot and blown up by the guards as they're aiming at you. Even if it doesn't kill you, you still have to retry since you're unable to disarm the bomb, so the objective fails. I'd say it's more likely for this to happen with the second bomb location in one of the control decks. There are three guards in that room, and a hostage, and it can be pretty annoying. Depending on how you go about it, the time can feel pretty tight. Frigate has to make the list, especially because I missed the target time by only one second waiting for the last hostage to escape. You could imagine waiting around for this objective to complete just to be shown a 431 on the end screen, it's a big kick to the balls. So you could imagine my utter disbelief when about 10 minutes later, after waiting for the last hostage again, this happened. A 431 twice. What in the freaking hell is that? With the last hostage having me wait so long, I changed it up to release him on the right staircase first. And after getting through the level all again, and running to the boat without having to wait on any hostages, clearing 430 isn't actually so bad at all, but was a decent challenge, so it's number 10 on the list. Number 9, Surface 2 on Double O Agent in 4 minutes and 15 seconds. It's a bit more challenging, it's hard to see where you're going with the dark red fog. Combine the fog with a few locations that you need to find, you have to go into the right little cabin to find this guard with a key that you need to access the satellite communications tower. On top of that, there are four security cameras you need to destroy as one of your objectives. Naturally finding four little cameras out here adds to the learning curve. Plus, the enemies don't really ever stop coming, so you need to keep that in mind because stopping to shoot them down isn't just dangerous, but pretty much a complete waste of time. It can be a pretty disorienting level, and you have to understand where things are in relation to others, like remembering to head a certain direction after its few landmarks. So you use the key to get into the tower, shoot one of the cameras, destroy the communications link, and then it's time to find the other cameras tucked away behind a couple other cabins. Once you shoot those, it's finally time to find the bunker exit, but you can't forget you have a mind to destroy this helicopter as your last objective. It's a fair amount to keep in mind, and a lot of things can be hard to find. You'll throw this mine before gaining bunker entry to end the level, and just hope you did it fast enough. Number 8, Cradle, on Agent, in 2 minutes and 15 seconds. As we've looked at one Secret Agent and two Double O Agent levels so far, 
Might sound a bit surprising to have an agent target time make the list, but Cradle is truly a one-of-a-kind challenge. It at least feels like you're surprisingly reliant on at least a little bit of luck for Trevelyan to head to the bottom of the stage as soon as you need him to. Cradle is one of the tougher levels to not die on, especially when the difficulty is bumped up, but on Agent, that's not really the problem here, especially after grabbing the first body armor. The way the level plays, so you just need to destroy the control terminal after shooting out some drone guns to make it easier for yourself, but then we get to chasing Trevelyan, and he's a bizarre bit of AI, but on the surface it's pretty simple. He will run away and stop to shoot back at you. He's essentially invincible during this stage of the fight as he's running, but he reacts to damage at a handful of the locations that he stops. And basically, if you seem to follow up and shoot him well enough, he should be triggered to say he'll see if he can finish the job as he makes his way to that final tiny platform of the bottom of the cradle. Here I think I got super lucky that it didn't take me more than just a few tries because of the timing and luck on this no-scope headshot as he was standing in his vulnerable state. can't waste opportunities like this, so we'll strafe as fast as we can to safely drop down that ladder to the small platform and finish him off in under 2.15. It can be a pretty frustrating and confusing target time to hit if the game doesn't feel like cooperating. 2 minutes and 15 seconds comes up fast, and that's why it's number 8 on the list. Number 7, Statue on Secret Agent in 3 minutes and 15 seconds. Now we're getting into one with a really strict time limit. I mean, you're actually going to have to channel your inner Diddy Kong racing skills in order to beat this target time. Strafing without wasting much time is hardly enough to get it done. You actually have to keep things really tight around the corners and moving over hills or whatever is right next to the wall because taking the main path is simply not fast enough. For some players, I bet they can't believe this is only at number 7. In an N64 group, there was somebody adamant that this was their biggest struggle. I do empathize with them because retrying this over and over for hours would completely suck. And when a time limit is so tight, it's not unusual for you to go as fast as you can and just continue to barely miss, left wondering what else you could possibly do to get faster. Avoiding every soldier and running like a madman is what this level becomes and also tinkering with how far away you can stand from Valentine and figuring out how early you can run away from him toward the end of his dialogue are precious seconds that you simply need to help push this under 315. The same realizations need to be made when going through the Trevelyan dialogue in order to complete the Unmasked Janus objective. You also should have your gun put away to save the couple of seconds of him asking you to do so. And there's a lot of optional dialogue here, but as soon as Trevelyan says he's Janus, it's time to strafe for the hills, keeping it as tight as possible, the whole way back. Obviously Statue is a disorienting and confusing level, so you could imagine why it can take a while to get even close to the time required. After waking Natalia and pulling her from the explosion, it's time to stand with your eyes peeled in the area where the flight recorder is thrown, or more accurately, spawns in one of several places, and your fingers are crossed at this point hoping it's right there in front of you, before holding your breath and strafing through the gate as fast as you can, in hopes that you did it just fast enough, which is why it's number 7 on the list. Number 6, Archives on Double O Agent in just 1 minute and 20 seconds. How is this humanly possible is the first question you're left with when you see such a time. This one did take quite a bit of practice. There's no way around that. It's at least a level that you can practice on Agent when it's more forgiving, get the route down, and then move up to Double O Agent for the real deal. The learning curve of knowing exactly where to go is of course its own issue. Archives can be pretty confusing with how many of its areas look pretty similar or the same. I'd even argue that playing through this level in a more traditional sense can feel more challenging than it ends up being when you know exactly how fast everything can be done when you're not lost and don't really engage with anybody. It becomes a matter of chopping the first guard from the side so he goes down immediately, running out of the room and down the hall, then going up the stairs 
and running right for the room with Natalia, and you would assume with her having a gun pointed at her that she requires saving, but no, you can just open the door because those soldiers would direct their shots at you, so they just let her go. A big fail on their part. And as she's trying to follow you, you're already running toward the next person we have to see, the Defense Minister Mishkin. There's an upcoming soldier that is good reference for your time so far. If he's opening the door to the room with Mishkin in it, you're a bit slow. But if he's still several steps behind that in the room, you're at a good pace. And then using chops to take him out is essential unless you want the room full of the dozens of surrounding guards. It's surprising that almost 30 seconds of this run is spent waiting on Mishkin's dialogue and giving you the key for the safe. Little details like having your back to Mishkin while facing the safe to immediately open it makes all the difference. Then it's a matter of drawing your gun to fire your only shots in the whole level to break through the window for the exit. While it's a tough level to get right, it's only one minute, which makes grinding it pretty reasonable, and there's not really any luck required. When you start to get the level down, you'll consistently be close to or under the 120 barrier, which is why it's number 6 on the list. Getting into the top 5, now things are getting serious. You know this list is packed with challenge when number 5 is the dreaded and despised control mission on Secret Agent in under 10 minutes. Things that make this one a real chore is the length of it first of all. There's no shortcut getting back to the toughest objective, protecting Natalia as she breaches security. You have to be timely with taking out these drum guns and soldiers in the first area, careful to not take too much damage. On the way to the control center, you need to move at a good pace because the last thing you want is to make it through a mission like this, but just over 10 minutes. Secret Agent makes a big difference though. All I can say is, thank goodness it's not on Double O Agent. We are spared that challenge, which allows us to get hit a handful of more times and guards die easier, which matters a lot, especially when the worst part is having them run at you and Natalia. You have to quickly plant your mines to destroy the mainframes, and not waste much time in this side room with the four drone guns, soldiers, and another mainframe to plant a mine on. When things are all prepped, let Natalia out to meet with you, but the important thing to do is grab that body armor. This is the perfect time to do that. You would know where it is if you chased Boris upstairs when he initially runs, but it makes sense to do it now because you would otherwise be waiting on her to get to the computer and to trigger the security. Might as well use those seconds to grab the armor instead of bothering to snag it before the side room, which is ultimately a waste of precious time. As the security sounds, this is everybody's least favorite part. On Secret Agent, it does boost your confidence since you'll have far less instances of pumping somebody with a half dozen shots, turning around to take care of somebody else, yet the guard behind you somehow survived, shook it off since maybe all your bullets hit them in the shoulder which counts as a limb, or maybe a few of your bullets hit them in the gun. The point is, you get overrun a lot more often on Double O Agent because of crap like that, guards simply not dying when you really need them to. On Secret Agent, I didn't think it was too awful, and I felt pretty confident running up to the stairs, pumping a guard or two with lead, turning around and doing the same thing. I rarely took aim at anybody, it was mostly mowing through them as they came down. Finishing the stage is always tricky though, don't want all that hard work to go to waste, being picked off at the last second. There is one more mainframe to blow up behind this door. A quick mine toss and detonation takes care of that. And there's one last body armor around some lockers on the way to the very end. And picking this up pretty much ensures you're totally fine to run to the exit elevator. And if you're playing aggressively enough, there shouldn't be any problem doing this under the 10 minutes required. But make no mistake, it's still a challenging level, fortunately just on Secret Agent. And that's why it's number 5 on the list. Number 4. I think it's fair to say some viewers could swap this with control, it just comes down to how you feel about the levels. Aztec is considered by many basically the hardest mission in the game. Your enemies have AR-33s which are insanely accurate and on top of that, damaging. There are several rooms of these guards, before some drone guns, 
and then all of a sudden, the guards have lasers, which they are shockingly accurate with as well, plus they do even more damage. Not to mention the fact that Jaws can be incredibly deadly, since he's dual-wielding AR-33s and basically unloads entire clips as soon as he sees an opening. He must be wearing like 15 suits of body armor and probably got a needle in both thighs full of straight adrenaline. The amount of shots he can eat is just shocking. You can get more of an opening if you try to bait out his shooting animations, and fortunately for you, there is quite the exploit with Jaws where he can't shoot across the gap here, which is pretty much the only thing giving you a chance. After him though, there's of course the infinite spawning of a few guards at a time, you're just not exactly sure of which of the few places they're going to be, making it a super tense and dangerous run for the launch data. With all this being said, it's on Secret Agent, the medium difficulty, and just like Control, this does make a massive difference. There's only one body armor in the stage, and it's a very important one because things are deadly out here. That extra bar of health at less than a professional player's ability is what ultimately makes Aztec feel possible, and just barely. The timer itself keeps you moving, but it's not insanely pressing, just like Control. It's more so the difficulty of getting through these notoriously tough levels swiftly, but the concession is, it's on Secret Agent. Which is the saving grace here. Being able to take a half dozen more shots or so than on Double O Agent is a godsend. Regardless, it's still Aztec on Secret Agent at a decent pace. It's extremely important to not be panicky or attempt rushing, because you do have plenty of time. Apparently 8 minutes isn't even a crazy ask, because after just a few tries and kneeling down, Praying near the console with only one little notch of health left, I was able to barely survive. I was extremely relieved that it didn't require any more attempts, because at the end of the day, it's a pretty long mission, it's still challenging, but I did beat the 9 minute target time with over a minute to spare. Top 3 target times really aren't playing around, no more secret agents on this list, just double O agent from here on out. Bringing up this target time is bound to get a groan from the crowd. Number 3 is Train on double O agent in just 5 minutes and 25 seconds. Remembering this target time can make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Train may be the most linear level in the entire game as you make your way from the back to the front of the train, but on Double O Agent, it's already pretty tough to get through this level as it is, with how careful you have to be. There's not a single body armor anywhere. Being able to take your time and trying to choose your best angles at least make it feel doable, so you can say goodbye to taking it slow and hello to moving swiftly around like a ninja. Target times really do force you to play the game differently, and if you are used to being a patient player, it'll feel quite foreign because it can be pretty reckless. It's not exactly how you'd imagine James Bond would ever go about completing a mission. The first couple of cars can really be annoying with the explosive boxes all around you. As the soldiers are trying to hit Bond around the crate, there's plenty that could not go your way. As you're trying to move quickly to the front, you have to remember to stop to disable each one of the brake units, and normally that's not too big of a deal. But as you're moving through as quick as you can, chances are there may be a guard or two running to catch up to you. It can just be super tough to survive on this mission. Train is already in the top 10, arguably top 5 hardest missions in the game, now it's just significantly worse. You better not blow your opportunity once you're finally toward the end on the last handful of guards, dual wielding their ZMGs with body armor, not to mention rescuing Natalia the correct way too. You need your bullets to go through, past Oromov, and hit Xena in order to get the additional time required for Natalia to not only hack Boris's password, but also find out where Janna's secret base is and if you only shoot Oromov, you will run out of time and she will die in the explosion, making Double O Agent a bit of a mystery in itself on how to complete it. Bottom line, Train is often considered a top 5 hardest level in the game on Double O Agent. There's no body armor, and if you're not going about it the right way, it's going to feel impossible. Plus the time limit is pretty tight, so even if you don't really waste much time at all, you can expect a close finish as you run to end hoping that you were fast enough, which is why it's number 3 on the list.
number two, Caverns on Double O Agent in 9 minutes and 30 seconds. It's one of the most rage inducing time sinks of a target time there is. I really do regret how much time I spent on this level. You may remember it's a pretty lengthy stage and the target time is 9 minutes and 30 seconds. The majority of the time your run is going to be ended when you're already 7 to 9 minutes in, if not finishing it outright just to barely miss the 930 and realize you have to do that all again just a bit faster. It's a marathon of ZMGs, AR-33s, and super armored dual wielding blue hats of death. These guys take a shocking amount of slugs to the chest, even their head, before going down. There are several hallways of multiple guards, the rooms that hold the three different pump controls get harder and more punishing as well. The second one can be a dangerous pain, but at least there are a couple of ways to go about entering it. I was entering from the traditional doorway for multiple attempts. But if you take the back way after blowing up these lockers, you actually access the bottom of the room, meaning you don't have to deal with a few guards and a drone gun as well. Coming this way is also a nice opportunity for ammo, and it allows you to lure some guards, run in there, make sure you get the key card from that blue hat guard, destroy those pump controls, and just get the heck out of there before the rest of the guards have too much of a chance to shoot down on you. The third location of the pump controls, though, is a serious test, and it's very tricky by design. There are guards to your left and right. Luring out a handful of your enemies is super helpful first. You have to carefully position yourself and take out some guards, but it's not at all that simple. There's a couple things going on. They have glass in front of them, and these guys like to pull grenades. If a grenade hits the glass and blows up in their area, your mission will fail because of an objective added just to double O agent. While an explosion in there next to those fuel containers could save you time on Secret Agent, since it would destroy the final set of pump controls, plus kill all of the guards in there, the explosion makes you fail on Double O Agent since it destroys the radio you need in order to contact Jack Wade. And there are a couple different ways to go about shooting out the glass, but ultimately it's not just the grenades you need to worry about, it's the diabolical fact that your only weapon with a zoom has penetrating bullets that will go through guards and depending on the angle will hit the explosive barrels in the process, making the several minutes before this feel totally meaningless. Even when the radio did blow up, I still did finish the runs, just to keep trying to improve on the level and see what time I would finish with. Sometimes it made me feel less bad about what happened, and other times it just rubbed it in my face that I was fast enough but still need to try again and prevent that radio from blowing up. The other extremely dangerous part of this level is the trap with two drone guns on the ceiling in the final hallway with Trevelyan. You want to open the door and quickly back up and crouch before he sees you to make this last part significantly easier, because as soon as he sees you, RCP-90s and automatic shotgun enemies are spawned behind you. Important to mention that there's not a single suit of body armor in this entire marathon of a stage, so Caverns has everything going against it. It's long, it's on double O agent, and it's one of the hardest levels in the game. The time limit is honestly a bit pressing too, which is why it's number two on the list. Here are the honorable mentions, let's quickly acknowledge the other 10 target times in a pretty loose list of easiest to hardest just so we cover all of them. Runway on Agent in 5 minutes is insanely easy, you only need about 30 seconds to grab the key and run to the plane. Dam on Secret Agent in 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Overall it's just not too hard running from tower to tower, disabling the alarms, and bungee jumping from the bridge. Service on Secret Agent in 3 minutes and 30 seconds is a little more difficult, but not enough to crack the top 10. Silo on Agent in 3 minutes, it's pretty fun and simple. Low accuracy and low damage guards. You do have to run through the level quickly, but as long as you can find those keys on the ground, it's really not too bad, it's not hard to survive. Bunker 2 in 1 minute and 30 seconds on Agent is actually pretty easy, and it's a relief that it's not on a harder difficulty. Jungle on Agent in 3 minutes and 45 seconds, the difficulty is what makes this level not too scary to run through it even though it's a harder mission, just like Bunker 2. Streets on Agent in 1 minute and 45 seconds, fortunately got through this one really quickly. The time limit is pretty tight, but it's on Agent, so you just have to know where you're going, strafing most of the way, and remember, enemies do have rocket launchers, so hope not to get unlucky and hit with those. Bunker on Double O Agent in 4 minutes, it wasn't super easy, but you do have time to kill everybody reasonably, and it took a couple tries to get down, but the time limit isn't really that pressing. 
Depot on Secret Agent in just one minute and 40 seconds isn't super easy by any means, but the Secret Agent does give you more cushion, but there's one less objective. It only took a couple of attempts before moving on. Lastly, Egyptian on Double O Agent in 6 minutes. I think some players will wonder how it's not on the list, but the level itself becomes really easy once you know the steps to unveil the golden gun. If you've beaten this level before, a time or two, it's not crazy to beat it well under 6 minutes, especially with its 3 suits of body armor out there. Here we are finally at number 1. I'm sure a lot of players can see this one coming. Number 1. Facility on Double O Agent in just 2 minutes and 5 seconds. It's a real challenge that will push you into another realm of breakneck speed you could only dream of, except in your worst nightmare. Are you ready to transform from James Bond into a bat out of hell? Well, ready or not, here it comes because that's what you will become running through these hallways like a complete madman. It's a short target time, but you've got to get a lot of reps in to get this right. You're going to have to put in the practice to make these attempts as consistent as possible. Facility is kind of a large stage, and you'll be basically running and gunning with your fingers crossed with hardly any seconds to spare. Not only will you be praying for some luck in order to not die, which believe me on Double O Agent will happen a lot. It only takes 5-6 shots for your run to be shut down. You could at least argue that, at least you're only going back 2 minutes. And technically, yes, that's completely true, but the most menacing part of this whole challenge is the ultimate troll by Rareware, since you need to meet with Dr. Doak. He gives you the device to open the door to the final room with the gas tanks. Some players definitely know, and I've seen in some discussions, players have pointed out the fact that you can shoot through the window to get guards' attention to come open the door you need without using the device, and while that will let you into the room, it does not account for the fact that it is an objective to meet with Dr. Doak. The catch is that Dr. Doak's location is in one of seven places, with only three of those places working out where you need him to be. For some of my attempts, I was checking one door on the right, since it only takes a couple seconds to see if he's there or not, and that moves you up to a whopping four out of seven chance. It can be tricky enough getting to the end and surviving a run like this, so having to get used to the disappointment that comes with Dr. Doak just not being where you need him to be is just something you're going to have to endure. All of those depressing resets when you realize he's not in either of the rooms or around the corner. With this game of chance, it again falls into the theme of wanting to make your runs as consistent as possible. It doesn't take too long before it's burned into your memory. Zipping your way out of the bathroom vents, leaving guards behind you, taking this dude's keycard, using the console to open the next door, and not too long after that, we've got our first real problem with a group of soldiers walking towards us, so you throw and detonate a mine to get them out of the way, and if you want, you can use one on the soldiers behind you too. But the final areas of the level are when you're really going to have an overload of soldiers combined with the less than likely odds you'll see Dr. Doak. It's absolutely no surprise that you unlock invincibility after clearing this. Effectively, Goldeneye gives you the nod that you are indeed worthy of becoming invincible, forever an untouchable legend. First time I ever cleared facility in 205 took about 4 hours. And even for this video, I couldn't get away with making this one come easy. Over a couple hours spent on facility in 205, which is why it's number 1 on the list. What were your hardest target times? Any you would argue into the top 10? Interested in other top 10s? How about top 10 hardest medals in Star Fox 64? Or top 10 hardest levels on Double O Agent? Top 10 hardest Mega Man bosses? And much, much more? Be sure to subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.